Well done. Good job, Ethel. Good job. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, just need to clarify, despite the name, not Jewish. Uh, Ethel, they can't hear you. Yeah. The chats. I am really sorry. Uh, I guess I've got to start again. Uh, <laughs> I can't Aww. believe. Aww. I'm sorry. It's just one of those days. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to check. 11:47, so 11:50. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Trans Agenda, a show in which we discuss trans news in an inclusive manner that expresses the full range of trans people's humanity. My name is Ethel, I'm sorry for the mistakes I just made, uh, they she pronouns, and I'm joined today by Essence 4 editor Levi from a Levi called Bird YouTube channel. <laughs> you can say hello again, Levi, if you want. Uh, they heard me. <laughs> they heard you the first time. <laughs> Levi goes by yeah. he, him pronouns. Um, today we have three topics that we're covering. We have anti-Semitism in the anti-trans movement, UK courts rule trans folks legitimate targets for abuse, and a positive story, San Francisco seeks to award 1.6 million US dollars to black trans programs. <clears throat> now, before we can begin, we'd just like to make a few things clear, starting with the facts that we are fallible and therefore we make mistakes. Uh, as, as you might have realized by this <laughs> point, um, if you notice anything we've got wrong factually, uh, feel free to message us during or after the show and we'll be more than happy to update the stream description to include any errors. Um, the example we did last time was the fact that we misspoke in saying that Trump is no longer president, he still is president until Biden is uh, initiated, so um, like, that's one of the areas we have corrected uh, in the past. Uh, likewise, while we attempt to compile a list of relevant content warnings for the topics we'll cover, posting them to the very top of the description where um, there's always the possibility even that we may miss one or two. So just as with mistakes, if you think we're missing out on any content warnings, feel free to suggest any so we can update it. Um, just know that there's a link to the show's agenda, along with various links to various sources found in the description of the show. Now, I mentioned content warnings. The content warnings for this show are anti-Semitism, transphobia, Islamophobia, medical gatekeeping, rape and sexual assault, hate crime, and child abuse. Uh, so yes, I guess we should move on to housekeeping. But, before I can do that, we have a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Glade. My uh, Hebrew name is Hananya. I use they and he pronouns, and it's nice to meet you all. Hi. Um, so yes, uh, we can go on to housekeeping, uh, starting with uh, Levi. Do you want to do yours first, actually, because I still have stuff to set up. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Okay, so the first thing is uh, Ethel and I met on the 18th of December 2019, which means we've now known each other for just a little over a year, um, which I wanted to mention partly just because I'm happy about it, but uh, also because it's got me thinking about um, just how I got here. Uh, you know, I started off as just a guy with a YouTube channel that I was trying desperately to get off the ground and failing at and now I'm co-hosting the show and helping with all the videos and honestly <laughs> I kind of feel a bit bad because I'm imagining how that must have looked through the eyes of someone who's been watching Essence of Thought for two three four years and you know you subscribed for Ethel 
and suddenly you have to deal with this bird that's just come crashing through the window and started messing with everything. So I guess I, I kind of wanted to ask uh, anyone who's been watching the channel since before I came along, uh, you know, if you're happy with what I'm doing here and, uh, you know, if there's anything you'd like me to improve and just generally what your opinion is, because I'm an insecure bean who has no idea what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, next in real online. life or online? No, no online. We, online. We would love to meet <clears throat> in real life, but there's a pandemic. Uh, yes, um, there's a bit of a thing that's currently going on. Uh, shall, we, shall we tell them how we met, actually? Yes, yes uh, why, why not? Um, we met when I decided to... Uh, hang on, that, hang on. Can I build up some context first? Okay. I, I'll, okay, so I, I found... Um, essence of thought just through the algorithms in late 2018. I don't remember what video it was, but you know, how it works with YouTube channels. You see a video, think, oh, this is cool. Watch the channel for a bit. But then when the, when the stuff happened last year, I saw Woodford's video come up in my recommended, thought to myself, I'm trying to do a YouTube channel. I'm trying to talk about trans issues. I should respond to this. But I was really exhausted from my last response. And I was like, I can't deal with this right now. Happened to see Essence of Thought did a response and thought, oh, that's cool. That saves me doing it. I actually commented on that video uh, saying, oh, I was thinking of doing the, a response to this, but I just don't have the energy right now. And you actually told me not to like push myself too hard or like hurt myself or anything, which is really Lies. sweet. Nice. I'm a terrible person. Everyone knows this. <laughs> um, it's very sweet. I have very an image to keep up here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I remember thinking when I saw that first response video, people are going to be talking about this for a week. Nothing will change and everyone will forget about it. And then 2019 happened. And if you've seen my channel, you know I went on to respond to some other videos on the topic. Uh, I called Cirrus out. I did the response to Rachel Oates. Uh, the response to Rachel Oates uh, is partly how we met. Mm -hmm. Basically, Three people basically asked me if I had Twitter, and I decided, okay, three people asking me is enough. I have to get a Twitter now to make the people happy. So if you're one of the three people who asked me to get a Twitter last year, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I made this Twitter. And then legit, maybe an hour into having this Twitter, uh, I see, a, like, I think I was still working out the UI and the settings and everything. I see this notification saying essence of thought followed you. Yeah, um, that's and my story is uh, I was still getting news about stuff that was going on. Um, I was in a very rough place. I wasn't producing anything in that regard, but I was still gathering a lot of information uh, for private uh, purposes. Uh, and someone turned up and said, hey, did you know that um, someone's doing a breakdown of Rachel Oates releasing private emails from one of uh, her, her concerned trans viewers? And I was like, no, this has completely missed me by because I wasn't paying Oates any attention up until the point she decided to darvo me. Um, <clears throat> so this is actually the first time I actually really heard about it. Uh, I went back and I read a few articles on Free Thought Blogs. And I see that they had actually mentioned it, but I just never followed down that rabbit hole. For those who don't know, Rachel Oates um, decided to publish some private emails from a trans viewer. Um, wait, wait, wait. Did Free Thought Blogs talk about that? I did not know they, they talked did. about They that. did. This uh, is new. There is a mention. <laughs> I, was, I was compiling research and I noticed that actually is a mention of the emails. Uh, I just I never picked up it. But, um, I shouldn't be surprised, but I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, um, I was like, this is the first time I was hearing about it, so I, I went ahead and I saw, this is a new account, that there's no followers on here. Um, wouldn't it be really funny if this person <laughs> just set up this account and then, like, I just come along and just be the first follower? Uh, and that's what it was. I literally followed uh, him, and then I can't remember if it was the next day, or within no, a couple I, of I, I just immediately was like, okay. I, I, so mainly I message you to be like, hey, maybe you don't want to follow me right before I provoke Rachel Oates. Um, uh, mm. Yeah, so that was the main reason. But also I was like, how did you find <laughs> me? This doesn't seem, yeah. this does not seem like mathematically possible. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So yes. The funny thing is, also with the emails is I remember being worried about how long it was taking me to get the video out because I was sure 
that you would make a video on it. Yeah, that yeah, didn't happen. I, I just hadn't seen it. Um, yeah, which is fine. Contrary to what certain people said, I was not. I was not. She was completely Following out everything. of the picture. Um, mm. Like the only time I responded after three months of her creating like videos going on twenty-seven minute rants about me. Um, the mm. only time I responded was in September, when uh, I think it was Red Vetcher, is it? I can't remember. Um, they called her out, and she was still defending Woodford. It was like you're still lying after all these months. Uh, unblocked, responded. Uh, suddenly the fans, the wagons start circling. It's like, you know what, this was a really bad idea. Uh, Reblock, just back away. Um, but by that point, everything just continued to explode. Um, yes, and that's how we started talking. Uh, it was a very... It was a strange uh, relationship at first, because uh, I came to know that you knew Lily Orchard as well. Um, yeah, <clears throat> that's actually... Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember if there are any connections. I can think of one, but not one I can say on stream just for personal safety reasons because I wasn't very smart. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll have to tell you later. But, but uh, yeah. Because um, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd referenced uh, some of Orch's work in some of my work. Um, this is when I just, all I knew about her was the video stuff, which was um, very firm, but at the same time, like sort of understandable in the culture. I didn't know about everything in the background. Um, I publish that video, suddenly the emails start coming in, I find the stuff out, I say, hey, you know this person as well, what, what do you know about this? Um, and we both ended up doing our own sort of uh, analyses Research and, and then coming like... back, but yeah, there's, there's enough here that we need to take steps um, to be safe. Um, yeah. Which is, to, to be clear, just in case Lily watches this for any reason or any fan of her, this was not Ethel turning me against Lily. This was me coming to my own conclusion completely independently at the exact same time. Another thing like... I have chat logs to prove it. Another thing, we, we, we'll, we'll sum this up pretty quickly. Another thing she likes doing is um, claiming that we were like doing this because of um, the angry queer, uh, formerly Patchwork Heart. Um, because yeah, apparently I'm I'm best as friends with them. No, I've with never them. spoken to them directly. I'm the they only, only just followed me on Twitter recently. <laughs> I only I'm the only one who spoke to them when I was writing the video. It was on uh, child grooming in fandoms. Um, I tried contacting Oats. Oats didn't respond. That was fine. I contacted um, them instead. Uh, they did respond. You mean you mean uh, Lily? No, no, not not, not sorry, Lily. Yes, yeah. um, they, they both end in O. Oh, uh, I... <laughs> but anyway, um, so I contacted Lily. Said, "Hey, like, what do you think about this? Do you think it adds anything?" Um, they never got back. Uh, she never got back. Uh, so I contact. I also contacted Patch because I saw Patch had done stuff on it. Uh, they did get back. Um, and they noticed that they had friction with Lily, but it, it seemed just be like a, a messy friend breakup. Um, so they never said anything. They never pushed the point or tried to get Lily pushed out of the video. Uh, it was everyone else after I published the video, because let's think about this. Had Patch actually like pushed this stuff, like the abusive shit that Lily does, um, I wouldn't have put Lily as a source in a video in which I opened up for the very first time about the fact that I'd been chased out of the furry fandom after blowing the whistle on a child groomer. Um, yeah. Like, that video is ruined now. I've had to remove it um, because there's a danger there in linking Lily with this. Um, so, uh, yes, and that's sort of like from there we started hanging out, we started talking about other interests, and we just became friends. But, by which uh, <laughs> you you were talking to me about stuff. I, I didn't see any point in talking to you about stuff. I'm sorry. Because I was, it's not your fault. But yeah, yeah, you kept uh, like checking up on me and t t talking about interesting things and asking me questions about myself. If it had been up to me, we probably would have gone up separate ways right after. Uh, the Rachel Oates stuff, but you know, mm -hmm. you kept persisting. And you had to be very patient with me because, for, like, for the first six months we knew each other, I was convinced you'd want nothing to do with me eventually, like at some point. Uh, well, here we yeah. are. <laughs> um, the point is, I'm a very lucky bird. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to your plans in a second. There's one thing I got to do before that. This is what I wanted to do, but I totally forgot. I, I, I normally open up all these things, I just totally forgot this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
this channel, we do not run ads on this channel uh, for my mental health. Uh, all of the money comes via Super Chats and via Patreon, so if you'd like to sponsor us regularly, please do so via Patreon. It helps the channel out, it helps us do more stuff, um, and it just keeps us going. Uh, on that note, we'd like to thank the following sponsors. We have our $35 epistemologist class, uh, which is Gert van Voorst, Hannah Banghart, and Ma uh, Matthew Kovac, and Zoroy and Katie. Um, and then for $20 Immersivist, we'd like to thank Justin Allen, Sosh Daniels, who I believe is in the audience, and Steve Corbin. Uh, your support is always very welcome. Um, so yes, uh, you have some plans as well. Yeah, so the other thing I was thinking with messing around with everything on this channel and feeling kind of bad about it is like I'm not qualified in any way to be an editor. I'm just a guy with a slight aptitude for uh, like writing and, and English and stuff. I, I don't have any qualifications. So I've been thinking about working towards that uh, and looking into options for courses I can take and qualifications I can get. Uh, so far, I've started reading a set of, uh, I've, I've started reading a style manual. Um, it's an Australian one because that's where I live. So uh, at essence of thought, this is going to be infected by my kangaroo brain. Um, and uh, I want to try and work towards this accreditation exam. But the thing about this exam is, oh, not, not, just, not just for the sake of doing the channel work better, but also like so I can get a job because uh, we're not going to get enough Patreon money for me to get a job here. Not, you know, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're working not for a while. We, um, I, will, I will give myself options since I have to yeah, learn. I anyway. get that. But yeah, uh, this, this accreditation exam is not easy. Uh, they suggest you have three years of full-time professional editing experience before you even attempt the exam. So uh, I'm going to have to do a lot of work to learn all this stuff. So in the future, you know, there might be things of not being able to make videos as much, not being able to be on streams as much. It, it depends on what I want to do. Um, but yeah, I, my, the amount of involvement I have in the channel could change. And uh, also the, the work I do for the channel is going to change. It's probably going to be very inconsistent for a while while I learn these standards, because uh, as much as the style guide is written very clearly and it's very easy to understand, um, which I was not expecting. It's still a lot to read and it's still a lot to memorize. And uh, it turns out I have been getting some stuff wrong. So it's going to take me a while to learn all that. Um, yeah, I just thought everyone should should know uh, how much of a hack I am. OK, I don't think you're a hack, but um, I, I mean, objectively, I am. No, you're not. Anyway. <laughs> I think that means we finally can get round to the main topic of tonight, which is, of course, the anti-Semitism in the anti-trans movement. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I feel sorry for our guest here, who's just currently sitting out for now. Um, uh, so it's completely fine. I'm just listening in. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's just we will get to. You, don't worry. Um, <laughs> So the first story that sort of brought all this together, um, this popped up on Twitter, was the Daily Fail running a story about the fact that the Bank of England has three times more transgender staff than the average population in the UK. Um, which just as a story seems so peculiar. Like, why, why does this deserve... Um, you know, a article of its own. Uh, that is until you realize that the Daily Fail, which is the Daily Mail, uh, is a fascist rag. Um, how do we know it's a fascist rag? Well, cis man explainer uh, Graham Linehan back in 2016 acknowledged the fact that it is a fascist rag. Um, of course, Graham would then go on to write for the Daily Fail in 2019 and thank them for all their lovely services and everything in helping the uh, transphobic uh, mindset. But that, that's, just, that's just a little consistency problem. Uh, so yes, the Daily Fail is far right, it's fascist, it pushes anti-immigrant, um, and it pushes anti-Semitic, anti-trans, anti-gay, it, it, all of the boxes it ticks. Um, it is just a bigoted fascist rag. So, 
when we take that into consideration, the focus of trans people being more prevalent in banking starts to take on a bit more of a sinister dog whistle undertone. Um, for those who are lucky enough not to know that much about white supremacy, one of the uh, dog whistles they like to use when it relates back to the whole anti-Semitism and the whole, oh, you know, uh, they're taking all our money, is that the, uh, the banker, which is just another synonym for the globalist or Illuminati, has very anti-Semitic undertones. Um, <clears throat> Like, I, I don't know how prevalent this is in the States as much. I do see it in a lot of... Uh, it like, is. Oh, okay. My dad works for a bank. He works for the National Bank, the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. And for a long, long, long time, I was scared to tell my non-Jewish friends about that. <laughs> because they'd hear Jewish person with dad who works at bank, mm -hmm. therefore... I help control the world's economy, and I, <laughs> and I and I'm like this secretly super rich person, but despite being on food stamps, mm -hmm. I mean, it it's it is an on story here. Um, there is another section that they kind of inserted into the side of the story, which I think Levi might have some comments on in a second. Um, but like, it, all it is, is a internal survey found that 158 of the central bank's 4,575 employees stated that their gender identity was different to the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, so 3% of the institution's workforce. Um, meanwhile, Stonewall states that the best estimate for the number of transgender people across Britain is 1%, or about, excuse me, 600,000 people, um, including those who identify as non-binary. Uh, there's several things to note here. Um, one is economic security. Uh, not always, um, but people who are working in banking are more likely to come from... Um, uh, what I'm trying to think here, uh, educated backgrounds, because you need certain, de uh, certain degrees to do certain positions, um, so you're more likely to have financial security that others are going to lack. So if you're a trans person in that position, you're probably more likely to be open about the fact that you are trans um, than, say, in the general population. Um, the 1% of the, the general population is trans is the current estimate. Um, if you look at like the estimates for bisexuality in the general population, uh, that went from being you know one in a hundred to one in ten to fifty percent of our youth. Um, you know, we wildly underestimate uh, the prevalence of queer identities because they have been suppressed for so long. Um, so this sort of difference doesn't actually necessarily mean um, that there is a higher prevalence of trans people in the Bank of England. But it sounds scary, um, especially with the narrative being that um, the trans, uh, you know, the trans conspiracy has control over the NHS. That's the particular one that we see here in the UK. Um, somehow, in spite of like two to three year waiting list for the NHS, we apparently have all the power, all the control, etc. Um, and so for a fascist drag like the Daily Mail to link that demographic to an anti-Semitic dog whistle, it kind of doubles up. Now, now you can hate them for both reasons. Um, however, it's not just the abstract. We can talk about the dog whistle here, uh, but there have also been recent events which have had uh, literal Nazis come out and make the solid connection for themselves. Uh, we discussed Elliot, uh, is it Elliot Page? It is Elliot Page. Um, whenever I think Elliot, sadly, like, my mind goes to Elliot Roger. Um, Elliot Page coming out as trans. Um, so, I'm sure most of you remember that story, or you've heard about it on Twitter. Um, Elliot Page came out as trans rather publicly. Uh, expressing that they now went by they, them, and he, him pronouns. Um, and, you know, there's been quite 
that there's been quite significant shift in how quickly a lot of their information has been updated versus, say, the Wachowski sisters who came out in the uh, uh, the mid noughties um, So, like, there has been like a sign of a shift that hey, like, all this stuff can be updated without years and years of debate, etc. About things, uh, Netflix has changed certain credits. I've heard that they haven't changed others. Um, but they're still on it. Uh, pages like Wikipedia have been updated, uh, IMB and all this. So it's been nice to see there is progress in that regard. But at the same time, there was, of course, a big backlash uh, coming from the gender-critical crowd uh, who started spinning this narrative of lost lesbian. They were not the only ones to start spinning a narrative. Um, following Ellen Page coming out, I saw Elliot Page coming out, uh, the Daily Stormer, which, for those who don't know, the Daily Stormer is a Nazi, uh, it's a Nazi, um, I, I hesitate to call it a, a paper, it's not a paper, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a publication in the loosest possible sense It's a publication sense of the loosest word. Sense, yeah. Uh, it's a Nazi site, um, came out and they started making a string of assertions. Uh, one of which was the quote, F2M transgenderism is a plot to exterminate the white race by neutralizing our breeding vessels, end quote. Which, um, I don't know if either of you have anything to say on, because this is less I my have... field right here. <laughs> uh, I do have thoughts, but before I get to those, uh, Hananya, would you yeah. like to <laughs> tell... Tell the lovely people watching about your reaction when I told you about this casually when we were trying to figure out what order to do these stories in. I started laughing at the idea of Jews are trying to steal our wombs. It was so bad. Like, I, I was just, I'm just so used to this stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, Nazis are accusing Jews of trying to steal the wombs from white people, whatever. I had to, I tried to, to keep going with what I was saying several times and I realized, okay, no, this is a thing. I'm going to have to stop for a solid five <laughs> minutes just so that they can like breathe, breathe. Uh, <laughs> just, just breathe and, and compose themselves. By the way, uh, I should note that that quote there didn't mention the Jews. Uh, a later quote did, which stated that quote. It couldn't survive if ninety-five percent of our women were wiped out. So it should be. A, so it should be of a very major concern that the Jewish media and education system are attempting to make as many young girls as possible into transgenders. Like, that's not dog whistle there. That's 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 neon. It's just regular whistle. Um, that's that's, that's an just air screaming race siren. into the void. <laughs> um, Yes, I, I just Blade, would you like to tell that. us about the, the Blade? Would you like to tell us about the totally real time your your rabbi told you to be trans? <laughs> What's hilarious about that is, a I went to an Orthodox Jewish school, so like very very Jewish, very very into the whole Judaism's great thing, mm -hmm. and they were right wing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's also just the fact that, like, I want to have kids! <laughs> and that's, that's another thing. Um, Elliot, uh, I believe their partner is a cis woman. I cannot remember. I believe they are currently dating a cis woman. Um, so it's like, what's changed? <laughs> um, uh, well, that's the thing, is the article has this weird conflation of lesbians and trans men. Yes, lesbians they think that are being a trans drug. man, They seem to think trans men are like super lesbians, mm -hmm. like when you really <laughs> want to show your commitment to lesbianism, you be a trans man. <coughs> which mm -hmm. I find hilarious. Yeah, Levi, you didn't you... Didn't you start transitioning and consider yourself gay? <laughs> yes. Lesbians. There are lesbian Lesbianism trans is a men. Of a drug. <laughs> um, there are lesbian trans men, but mm -hmm. they're in the minority. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so there's a there's a few reasons why this this take is very silly. They're very obvious, and we all know them. But I will point them out for your entertainment. Is uh, that's why we're here. <laughs> trans 
trans men of color exists. That's the first one. Uh, Jews are not overwhelmingly trans, like friendly. Like there, there, there are there, there there are trans positive Jews. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. Uh, the Jews don't control the media. There's also this one bit that made me really, really annoyed, uh, just because of uh, what I've been through in my transition. They said that um, transitioning makes you infertile. And I, I do want to go through this just for like an educational thing. Is uh, so if you are transitioning, if you're trans femme, if you're going on estrogen and you have like testicles, chances are reasonable. Like it's not definite, but there's a there's a big chance you might be infertile. And the the explanation I've heard for this is because you have to actually like produce sperm every single day. But if you're trans mass. If you have ovaries, all of the eggs are inside your body at the moment you're born, you already have them. So the chances of becoming infertile from testosterone are actually not that high. Uh, testosterone does reduce your fertility, but it is not reliable for birth control. Like my endocrinologist is really aggressive about, you need to be on a hormonal birth control and you need to use a condom. Do not use testosterone as birth control, it doesn't work. And the thing about that reduced fertility as well is if you go off testosterone, it will usually come back. So testosterone really doesn't reduce your fertility at all. It doesn't make you infertile. It's not taking, you still have your womb, you still have your ovaries, that nothing is being taken away. You just, you just get a, a, a beard and a deep voice and some extra hair. And that's basically it. It's... It's not a plot to take away white women's wounds. It's not how testosterone works. Minor correction, Elliot is married, um, not dating. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. But yes. Um, I was just worried for a second, thinking that it was something I said. No, 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 it was something I said. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, like, this whole thing feeds into the whole idea of the great replacement. Um, this idea that, for some reason, Jewish people uh, just want to like end white people for some reason. Um, yeah, never... that was the main theme when I brought this up to my Jewish <clears throat> friends. I was like, hey, so apparently we want to turn everyone trans in order to get rid of white people? And they're like, but why though? But why would we take, take over, why? <laughs> It's just, it, that's the thing. According, the conspiracy according to them, we already sense. have the world. We already took over the world. But also, we want to take over the world more? Hmm. Question mark? My head, my, my head canon for this is like, maybe the devil is offering you a bagel if you do it? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's another thing. Like, we are, you know, the white, the white race is the superior race. But it's being destroyed by everything. Um, like, you know, blue hair destroys white supremacy. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Conspiracies don't need to be consistent. Um, I'm sorry, and, I think yeah. there's a whirring sound on my end. Usually it's quiet here, but not this I time. don't hear a whirring sound. Uh, is it my I order? don't either. You're good. Okay. Okay, um, it's just going to annoy me then. I have dogs outside. Um... No trains yet. No train saying hi. I am disappointed. Oh, dang it! <laughs> I like <laughs> after all of this, train says hi. The trains. No train. The trains. The trains are anti-Semitic. <laughs> um, but yes. Anyway, uh, so like disturbingly, uh, this really mirrors up with a lot of Reddit. Uh, Reddick? Rhetoric coming from the gender critical crowd, which is again the stolen lesbians. Um, you know, oh, our lesbians are being taken from us by the, uh, you know, the uh, gender ideology or whatever name they are deciding to take today. Uh, and the thing is, this is not new. This whole link between gender critical and anti Semitism is not new. Um, notably, like, 
than talking about the medical conspiracy, the whole idea that the NHS is somehow dominated by trans people, in spite of the fact that the wait list has grown from six months to a year to two years and now three years. Um, you know, despite all of this, uh, they keep forwarding the narrative um, that certain business minds are donating or, you know, funding, you know, the trans agenda. That's, that's the uh, usual catch-all expression, the trans agenda, <laughs> which is where we get the show name from. Um, and one of the people that they love to go on about in this regard is, of course, George Soros. Um, George Soros is a punching bag for these far-right conspiracy theories. Um, you know, uh, in spite of the facts that what they do is public, so it kind of sucks as a conspiracy, um, the fact that they have in the past donated some money uh, to trans causes, which, remind you, it's not some philanthropic thing. I'm not here to, uh, you know, defend uh, multimillionaires or billionaires. Like, it, it's done for tax reasons. But the fact that it is done for this is evidence that there is a conspiracy to uh, trans our youth. And that's what the Daily Stormer here is making reference to. Um, you know, oh, well, they're, 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 they're trying to eliminate our breeding stock. Um, again, it's always that's the focus. just so sexist. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. always a focus on, um, you know, typically, not always, like there is variance in this, typically trans women are a threat. Uh, trans men uh, and um, female assigned uh, non-binary folk, they're lost lesbians, you know. Um, you know. Trans, trans women are a threat, trans men are poverty. Yeah. Um, it says a lot more about the person behind it. And of course, one of the uh, big proponents of this, uh, con like this conspiracy theory is uh, Magdalene Burns, who for those who don't know, is the person pictured in the, um, the thumbnail for this episode. Uh, I realise that some of you recognised her. For those who don't recognise her, she was a particularly vicious uh, transphobe here on YouTube. She, like, she kept switching between far-right and feminist like lingo um, whenever she needed it sort of thing. Uh, excuse me. Famously, she compared being a trans woman to putting on blackface, um, urging for violence against trans women for that reason, uh, which, yikes, uh, as a white woman uh, colonizing a, a narrative, yikes. Um, but like one thing that's always underreported, particularly after JK Rowling in her big transphobic shit face of an essay, referenced her as an inspiration, a martyr to the gender critical crowd. Um, one thing that has typically been forgotten and left at the, way, at the wayside, not by everyone, um, but it's not nearly brought up as much as the black facing, is the fact that she was one of the people pushing um, the George Soros uh, conspiracy. Uh, posting multiple articles about George Soros being the money behind the transgender movement, uh, continually going on about, like, this dark secret plan uh, to trans, you know, assigned female people. Um, so this is not something new. Uh, and, like, I don't want that... I, I don't want to give the impression by talking about this Daily Fail article now, and the Daily Stormer, that this is something new. Um, so yes. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to what I've said so far. I'm sorry, I'm taking up most of the airtime. Um, yeah, well, when don't you? Uh, <laughs> Hananya, is there anything I'm, you'd like to uh, add? <laughs> no, not really. I'm, I'm just sorry. kind of... No, you're fine. I feel like we invited you on, I'm, and like, yeah. Um, I'm jumping in when I have something to say. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking more about the whole 
stealing a wounds thing. It's mm. actually making me really upset. Uh, because, um, so I don't know if I've talked about this on the stream before. I know I've, I have mentioned, like, alluded to it on Twitter. I recently realized I actually grew up with this idea mm -hmm. of being property of, uh, like, my womb being a resource for someone else to control. And just, it was a lot easier to deal with when I thought it was just one person who had some very obvious issues being particularly misogynistic mm -hmm. but now seeing it being so prevalent not just among nazis but among supposed feminists as well mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 really not nice to go through that it's... yeah and this whole thing is it's just like reveals that like this whole feminism this, uh, uh, radical feminism, trans inclusion, radical feminism is not feminist in the slightest. Um, like the arguments made about fertility and everything like this, it's the same arguments like uh, about um, having a hysterectomy and birth control. Uh, you know, like they, they talk about how oh well you're destroying like perfectly good ovaries by transitioning regardless of what type of transitioning you're doing whether it's social transitioning because apparently socially transitioning somehow yeah, has a medical on impact that. Um, on that <laughs> i plan on having kids i plan on having <laughs> multiple kids actually <laughs> at least two and like i also am like very 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 afraid of turf circles and mentioning that I'm trans. I don't like being in turf circles, but like if I'm ever around them, I cannot say I'm trans because then they'll start losing their shit at me that I'm like, I'm betraying my gender and like hurting my fellow women, which by the way, mm. ew, but also just, I'm ex I'm like exactly what you want and yet you still say I'm a traitor. Yeah. I mean, what the hell? But also on the other side of the scale, it's like people who do essentially transition because they've got like severe gender dysphoria and it's a way for them to alleviate it. Like the argument, the undertone here is that they should sacrifice their life to preserve an organ. Um, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that and is... you'd never say that to a cis woman. And you it, would never say that. Always... I mean, you'd be surprised, but a feminist, I don't think, or even someone, a woman pretending to be a feminist, I don't think would say it to a cis woman. And do you know what it always reminds yeah. me of? It always but... reminds me of conservative Christians in America who say mm. no abortions, not even in cases where the fetus is non-viable and it will kill the host. Um, mm. You know, it just reminds me of that. It is so cold and callous. Um, it treats the person as disposable, but the organ as sacred. Um, yeah, and that it's is this idea that your your organs matter more than you. Mm. I would also just like to say uh, thank you, Ethel, for saying Christians. Because so many people conflate that with like all Abrahamic religions and Judaism is very, very not for that. Mm -hmm. We literally view um, the fetus as not alive, like able to have, be aborted for whatever reason until it comes out. Mm -hmm. So no matter what uh, um, host's life comes, comes first, if like the... If any, if it's gonna make them unhappy for mm -hmm. whatever reason, they retain get an abortion. their bodily autonomy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's a big thing, and that's, and I'm not even saying like that's like a, a radical idea in Judaism. I went to a friend who's like the most religious guy out there, and I was like, hey, so say I got raped, what would happen? And he was like, oh, get an abortion. No duh. I just spilled some tea. Um, I was listening. You spilled some tea. I spilled tea. some tea. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, uh, not that kind of tea. Um, I'm just trying to figure out why this is making me feel so gross because it, like, I'm actually I, a little dissociated. I, I, it's not your fault. 
Uh, it's it's their fault for being disgusting. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, it's actually to the point where I'm a little dissociated. I'm just trying to figure out what it is about it that's pissing me off. Mm -hmm. And I think it's this expectation that um, you just because of your perceived gender, uh, you have to be self sacrificing. Mm -hmm. uh, self sacrifice is not always a bad thing. Uh, sometimes if you're choosing to do it for whatever reason, you know, it can be very something to be very proud of something that's very meaningful, but being forced to sacrifice yourself for something is very unpleasant. It's, it's not a good way to live. I think a self sacrifice has to be a self self sacrifice. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's, it's it absolutely is horrific. Uh, and nothing gets done about it, um, which is interesting, uh, you know, considering the current stuff that's going on in the UK, specifically, specifically around the Labour Party, um, which I don't know if either of you know much about. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, um, under his leadership, various accusations of uh, anti-Semitism came out. Uh, they did an investigation, they implemented a new policy to fight it, it was decreasing under that policy. Uh, Keir Starmer came to power, uh, ejected Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn's come back. Um, but then also Keir Starmer just recently ejected a, um, a left, uh, left-leaning, um, like a Jew from the party, uh, for various things. Um, you know, and it's, it's just interesting because Keir is doing absolutely nothing about the transphobia problem, and as this is hopefully showing you, um, the transphobia problem and the uh, which is like based on this whole narrative of they're transing our children. We need to protect the children. It's the, the you know the secret Illuminati behind the curtain. We need to fight that. That is based in anti-Semitic rhetoric, um, but it doesn't help Keir Starmer's neoliberalism. So. That, that gets ignored. Um, so, you know, there's that. One thing I did just want to add, uh, uh, we'll come back to do finishing notes if you have any. Um, there's just one element I do want to add, and that's because we're talking about anti-Semitism. There is another part of the bigotry to the gender-critical crowd, and that is the Islamophobia, um, which I do want to mention. I don't want to pretend like it doesn't exist. Um, uh, Kelly J. Keen Minshall, more commonly known as Posey Parker, uh, has some rather interesting thoughts. Uh, for those who don't know who Posey Parker is, um, Keen Minshall is the bigger responsible for the black, or sorry, sorry, the white text on a black background, uh, which is the dictionary definition of woman, which says uh, adult human female. Now, first of all, that is a she campaign. That does not exclude trans women. Um, but the thing is, there's the social context behind it, which is like, they're, they're, they're tr that's what it's become associated with. It's become associated with attempts to exclude trans people. So even though it fails, um, it's still viewed as transphobic. Uh, she is constantly trying to sell her merchandise with this uh, definition on. Um, and like, you know, so she's quite big here in the UK turf crowd. She's also quite big overseas in America. Um, so, you know, that's her. She uh, is close friends with Stephen Christopher Yakesley Lennon, who is someone else I've covered on the channel. Uh, they are known as Tommy Robinson, um, who is a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Um, and she regularly promotes his work. Uh, Yatesy Lennon is a person who jeopardized a, um, the, there was a court process going over uh, certain uh, grooming rings, uh, child grooming rings. Yatesy Lennon jeopardized the entire trial uh, so people could go for a mistrial just so he could get himself arrested and line his own pockets um, whilst propagating an Islamophobic narrative. Um, so again, all this bigotry is connected in like a dozen different ways. 
Um, the bigotry got so bad that uh, Gene Hatchet, isn't it? Um, I believe it was Gene Hatchet. Uh, yes, it was Gene Hatchet, another big transphobe, uh, left. Both over the working with the far right, uh, Tommy Robinson, the Proud Boys, uh, but also the working with the Heritage Foundation, which is another thing Posey uh, likes to do. So, um, yeah, the idea that there is anything left or feminist about these people and these groups, absolute garbage. Um, so I guess I just want to open up if anyone has any questions for our guest today, uh, any comments they want to point out, etc. Uh, do ask. Um, Hanya and Levi, uh, is there anything you'd like to add on the story? We've just passed uh, the hour mark. Um, or have we covered most of the bases? I, I can't think of anything. I'm just waiting to see if anyone uh, says anything in the chat. Look, uh... Just to double check, uh, you got it set to live chat, not top chat, right? I have it set to live chat on... Uh, that person's getting hidden. I had it set, on... what about... <clears throat> had it set on live chat at one, uh, but not, not on the other. Um... <clears throat> what about Christophobia? You can't. Christians are the majority. <clears throat> Christian phobia isn't a thing. It just isn't yeah, a thing. Yeah, because Christians are, are just basically everyone. Mm -hmm. The moment someone tells me that uh, that um, Christmas is just a secular holiday, it means that Chris Christian phobia is not a thing. Mm. I would I have legitimately been asked why I don't have a Christmas tree in my house by people who are aware I'm Jewish. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of lucky. I, I grew up uh, spending time in Norway, so it's always been good Yule, um, <laughs> not Christmas. Uh, so I'm kind of lucky in that regard. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah. It can be astonishing. Uh, I got very confused by that name because it's spelled J U L. <laughs> thought you meant July. One one oh, right. thing I'm uh, salty, just salty about that I just need to state, uh, there's a shopping center right across the street from my house. And when you drive in, there's a giant, like 50 foot tall Christmas tree. It is very, very, very tall. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, well, it's pro they, they, they probably like care a bit about Jewish people. And yeah, in the very back of the shopping mall, they have a tiny... A uh, little cardboard display of the dreidels, not even the most important part of Hanukkah, which is the Hanukkiah, mm -hmm. but the dreidels, which is literally a toy. <laughs> but that doesn't fit the persecution complex that Christians have. Um, like, because their, their entire narrative about getting into heaven and everything is based around the idea that they will be persecuted. Uh, so the fact that that hasn't happened, the fact that they were at the forefront of colonialism with missionaries and everything like that, um, they have to do some revision. <laughs> mm. uh, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, our house, uh, the winter holidays, is just a mix of everything. Because of course we've got Diwali as well, which is the light festival and everything else just happening here. Um, so... Yeah, our, our house is just a mess. I was hanging up uh, sparkly beads last night. It's just like, this is a magpie nest. There is just glitter, no rhyme or reason. Um, it's just, yeah. Is that really a magpie nest? Isn't that just mandatory gay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, Am I, I wrong? I try to make the bird puns. You just you just go straight for that. <laughs> uh, Blame Blade. Yes. Um, They're the ones always making those jokes. Are you um, saying you you don't eat the pudding? How could you not eat the pudding? If we're talking about Christmas pudding and raisins, I cannot stand raisins. Um, who, who, like, no. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm I, sorry. I, I sound so ignorant here. What the heck is Christmas pudding? 
terrible. You're not missing out. <laughs> um, in general, it's pretty terrible. Like, I, get, I, get, got, I get donuts. Someone I got, get donuts. That's my winter treat. It's someone, awesome. Someone got the heaviest bran bread. Like, really awful, cheap, nasty, heavy stuff that tastes like a brick. Stuffed a load of raisins and, like, moldy fruit in it. Um, drenched Ugh. it in alcohol. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is just Ew. horrible. Uh, I can't stand fruitcake either. I can't stand that, any of those. No, things. no. Just do sufgani oat. Just do sufgani oat, which, by the way, just means donut. Just do donut. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. I can get fried stuff here in India all the time. <laughs> there there, there, there just... is a reason India has a diabetes epidemic. Um, <laughs> it's fried stuff from breakfast to dinner and dessert. <laughs> even. Um, but yeah. So I think uh, that is a wrap up from this topic. Uh, I guess um, zero five fifty. So the oh good, you've been doing timestamps. I forgot to remind you, and I felt not bad. Edit them. I do need to edit them at the end. I will prove them afterwards. <laughs> I do rough, and then I prove. So. The next story, which is not actually one we announced in the description, because we can't always fit every topic, and that is just annoying, but sadly, that's <laughs> just the way things are. Uh, for those who aren't aware, the UK courts have ruled trans folk legitimate targets for abuse. Uh, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going, what? Um, Right, so for this we need to go back. Um, there was an incident involving Stephanie Hayden and uh, Kate Scotto. Stephanie Hayden, a trans woman, Kate Scotto, a notorious transphobe. Uh, some of you might have previously heard of Stephanie Hayden. Uh, she was the woman who J.K. Rowling would later threaten with lawsuit unless she immediately retracted a comment uh, on Twitter. So she removed her comment on Twitter and then posted a clarified version uh, which made it much harder for J.K. Rowling to threaten lawsuit. Uh, so they're quite a public figure. They receive a lot of transphobic abuse. And at one point, uh, this Kate Scotto decided to come after her. Uh, and she was inciting hatred, causing a large crowd of gender critical people to come hunt them down, uh, misgendering them, referring to them as a pig in a wig. Um, so it's quite clearly attacking over their trans identity, etc. Uh, and then, back in February uh, of 2020, they went to court and it was ruled that, um, that Kate Scotto had violated Section 127 of the Communications Act of 2003. Uh, what the Communications Act 2003 deals in is um, malicious communications. Uh, so the person had contacted and used digital, uh, sorry, electronic communications to incite anguish and harassment of this individual. Um, so they got fined, I think, £1,023, if I remember correctly. Um, so that was that, and that seemed to be the case. Um, of course, uh, Kate Scotto was not happy about the ruling. So she decided to take it to the, um, the appeals courts, I believe they're called. I'll double check what they actually are called. Court of Appeal uh, in London, which means that she can have the, the first ruling challenged. Uh, and on Wednesday, the 16th of December, uh, Lord Justice Bean and Justice Warbury ruled that, quote, free speech encompasses the right to offend and indeed the right to abuse another. Which um, completely violates the uh, Section 127 on the Communications Act. Uh, so this makes absolutely no sense, except in pointing to trans people as an exception to the ruling. Um, so that's the general case. I don't know if you have any comments on it before I start going into more details. Um, like, anything I mean, you noticed, uh, I can go into... I'm sorry. Um, Levi? Yeah. Did you want to add anything? Have I missed anything? 
No, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to pay attention. Oh, I'm that's still fine. Really... Okay. That's fine. Uh, Stephanie appears to be intent on counter appealing. We don't know if that will be the case. Um, so I guess I should really go over the laws as this is like links to. Uh, besides the Section 127 of the Communications Act, uh, what uh, Kate Scotto had done could have been tried under harassment, which is a criminal offence. Uh, I should note that the malicious communications, um, which you know was discussed, also is a criminal offence. It carries with it the possibility of a six-month sentencing plus fine. Um, she wasn't sentenced to uh, prison time, but she did receive a fine. Um, however, it also becomes far more complex in the fact that it also fits under the definition of a hate incident. Uh, for those who don't know, in the UK we kind of have a dual system uh, when it comes to hate and law. Uh, we have general hate incidents, which is the umbrella, and then they get divided into two things. We have hate speech, which is incitement to abuse, violence, etc. Uh, and then we have hate crimes. Um, and what a hate crime is, is it's a criminal offence which is also intersects with a hate incident. And the way that works is on top of the um, the punishment for the criminal act itself, uh, a hate incident can also receive additional um, penalties, both financial and uh, prison time. Uh, and the basis upon which that is done is the idea that when you partake in a hate crime, you're not just hurting the individual in question, the target, you're also hurting the demographic as a whole. And therefore, the uh, punishment scales with the uh, severity of the crime. A more severe crime, a more severe the punishment. Uh, and this could was this was quite clearly a hate incident as well as a criminal offence. Uh, so by this logic, the laws on hate crime have also been attacked here for no reason. Thankfully, it won't actually result in a change to the policy as written, um, but this is now set as precedent, which is what courts can use um, to argue their case. Uh, so, in this very eerily similar feeling to the early uh, England and Wales Heart Cry. England and Wales High Court ruling on uh, puberty blockers, which is having massive ramifications, uh, this also is likely to have the same. Not only are trans people being stripped of our rights, we are now being stripped of our protections. Uh, this Court of Appeal has effectively declared trans people okay targets for abuse. Um, and the word abuse is their word, not mine. They mention offence and abuse. Ooh, can uh, I ask what they said to justify <clears throat> this in anyone's eyes? Uh, well, they made a couple of references to, like, playgrounds um, and the whole idea of, like, we tell people to, mm. uh, you know... Oh, we tell children to play nice with each other. Um, and it's like, yeah, but these are adults. <laughs> um, and this is a very clear case of harassment. Um, this was not just someone in an argument saying something bad about someone. This is targeted, calculated harassment of a trans person who is already receiving an extortionate amount of hate for other reasons. Um, and it was designed to also make other trans people feel unsafe and uncomfortable on social media sites uh, such as Twitter. That was the one thing that really jumped out at me, actually, is like just one was the audacity of talking down to an adult as if they are a child mm -hmm. in a court case, any kind of court case, but especially a case like this. But also the hypocrisy, because they were saying this comment about teaching children to play nicely to the trans person, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So they were saying, we are going to allow people to abuse you in the name of teaching people to play nicely. Yeah. Which is a very strange thing to say. I don't know, I, like, I don't know much about kids personally. I imagine there are people who are just as, if not more ignorant than me. So if you're not aware of this, mm -hmm. we do not punish children who are mean to other children by allowing them to be abused. That's not a thing that happens. Their analogy is broken. I don't like it. Of course, they say this is based on free speech. 
which again, interesting considering that Stephanie was threatened by lawsuit by J.K. Rowling, um, mm. which completely shows the contradiction here. It's only free speech so long as it's convenient for me. Um, it's only free speech if it's anti-trans. If yeah. it's pro-trans or anti-bigot or anything, then roll out the slap suits. Mm-hmm. Um, we so. didn't get free speech when it came to Grave Linehan, now did we? But billionaires mm-hmm. uh, allowed uh, free speech to abuse trans people. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, Stephanie... Play nicely, let your brother hit you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Stephanie, from what I've heard, is intending to push back. That might change. Um, that might have already changed. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But again, this has a lot of people afraid, especially considering that one in five, 20 percent, uh, 21 percent specific, specifically of um, LGBT plus people in the UK have been the victim of a hate incident in the past 12 months. Um, you know, hate crime targeted towards LGBT plus people has spiked, specifically towards trans people. Uh, and we are seeing, like, judges ruling, you know what, abuse, abuse is actually okay. You, you can abuse people, uh, specifically mm. those people. Um, mm. And it's absolutely disgusting. And here's the nerve of the thing. I know that statistic on the increase of hate crime, because at the same fucking time as this was happening, the British police came forward and said, hey, you know, LGBT plus people, we need you to start reporting hate incidents. And it's mm-hmm. like, but why would they? Um, we'll come back to the issues with police in the UK and all that, but as a hypothetical, let's pretend for a second that the police were perfect when it came to the documenting and archiving of hate crime and hate incident. What's the point? If the police are going to document it, it's going to go to court, and the judge is just going to rule abuse of trans people is okay, what's the fucking point? You know, oh, you can say, well, the police and the court are two different, you know, institutions of the same uh, legal system. Yeah, but that's the thing. If one stops working, so does the other. You know, you can report away all you want. That's not going to change anything unless it is challenged in the court. Um, As for the police... um, Of course, uh, a lot of people have mentioned the facts that when they have reported specifically transphobic hate crime, uh, the police have like mistreated them, misgendered them, uh, not seemed to take it on with a serious attitude. People look at the hate crime laws in the UK and they say, actually, they're they're really serious and like you know it shows how forward-thinking they are. No, there's a reason the hate crime laws are the way they are. For those who don't know what I'm on about, in the UK, if you believe you are the victim of a hate crime incident, the moment you say, I believe this crime was uh, acted upon under the influence that I belong to, demographic X, the police have to start uh, investigating it as a hate crime. Um, Whether or not it's ruled that in court is different, but they have to document it as a hate crime and take evidence in that way. And the reason they have to do that is because when that wasn't the policy, guess what they did? They just ignored people. Um, You know, they didn't take the issue seriously. And so people came along and said, actually, we're going to introduce policy. So if you do screw up on this, um, your job is forfeit. Sadly, that doesn't seem to have actually worked. Um, To this day, the police are very flippant in regards to various hate crimes. And there's not a lot of trust there. Um, and as much as the police complain about, oh, you're not trusting us with these things, well, there's, there's reasons for that. Um, individual experiences, high-profile cases in the courts like this, all of that impacts... Train says hi. Uh, all of that impacts how, you know, LGBT plus people interact with the legal system over here. Um, and, like... People, I, we, I mentioned the trans hysteria um, a lot. <laughs> I talk about it. It's the first, first 
Pa on our show, he talks about it. Um, the thing about the trans hysteria is, when I said we're in the trans hysteria, I don't mean we're at the peak of the trans hysteria. Uh, the trans hysteria period includes the sudden increase in awareness and the peak of abuse. Uh, I don't know if like, we're peaking it now with the high court ruling and um, you know this uh, case on abuse, but that scares me. The possibility that things could get worse, a lot worse, um, and it makes you know it makes someone feel powerless. Um, but we can talk about it, and we can keep communicating, passing on information. Uh, those who know the channel know that we have one thousand nine hundred and I think ninety or something pounds um, raised. Uh, this was originally raised to fight a slap suit by a former comedian uh, turned full time transphobe uh, Graham Linehan. Um, former comedian, former human being. Former human being. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, yes, I have my by nails. Um, yeah, make make the comments about the fingers all you want. Uh, but anyway, um, yes, uh, we raised the money, and it's like, okay, well, he seems to have backed off on that. Uh, but now it's like, okay, uh, we have to keep this money around because if someone else uh, gets sued, we have a pledge to go help them. Um, you know. Uh, that, that's what the money's been kept around for um, currently. So, yeah. And I, I was thinking, hey, you know, with the, um, like, there was a legal case to fight the high court thing. I was like thinking, hey, should I donate the £2,000 to that? But then I saw it jumps, like, it was 20000 was the first goal. It was already at 18000 when I saw it, and then it jumped to 1000 when I went out for a walk. Uh, it's past 100000 now. They've raised well and truly on their goal. So I was like, okay, that doesn't need money. Um, people are raising money for, like, getting health care to those who have been stripped of it via gender GP, um, which thankfully doesn't operate under UK medical guidelines because it doesn't have to. Uh, so... Um, it works under guidelines set by other countries of the EU. Um, but yeah, so like people getting their medications via that. Uh, so it's like, you know, I don't know if things are going to start getting better now or if this is the start of things getting worse. Um, so we're, we're kind of sitting on that money to like wait and see. Um, someone might need it in the near future. Uh, so yeah. Uh, very, very depressing topic. Um, I realise it's also a UK-centric one. Uh, so I don't know if either of my guests have uh, anything to say on that. Um. <clears throat> I'm sorry, wait, it's either of your guests. I'm not a guest. Well, yes, you're a co-host, okay. <laughs> well done, Levi. You can be pedantic. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I earned this position. Hanania? I worked really hard. <laughs> Are there any thoughts you'd like to share, or...? Wait, are you there? Are you okay? Um, I'm, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm just... Th I don't... Ameri I, stupid American here. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Not stupid, it's just... No, who needs to Fine, learn about ignorant the American, how about that? <laughs> Oh, it, is, it is kind of annoying that at, uh, by, by the time I reached college, I knew more about the US election system and everything like that than I did the UK one, um, because that's how it's dominating. Yeah, it. we took over the world. I'm well aware of this. But I'm slowly, slowly infecting the rest of the world with my kangaroo brain. Ginger nuts. Ginger nuts, Glade. Ginger nuts. How dare you? How Frickin' dare you! Um, I'm so cruel. I'm just bringing inside jokes into this stream that no one has any way of understanding. But yeah, uh, for the American, for the like one American, I believe, aka Sash, um, <laughs> ginger nuts are the UK and uh, Australia word for, uh, for ginger snaps. Snap. Ginger snaps the cookie. <laughs> they're called ginger the cookie cookies in India. In, in India, you they're thought... called ginger cookies as well. Um, uh, when I first said ginger, because I, I just casually was like, yeah, ging I like ginger nuts. I like ginger nuts. Some ginger nuts. And Glade was so confused. So like, wait, you're going to get a nut and put ginger on it? It's great. 
Ginger nuts are the only type of ginger I will have. That is valid. <laughs> like... Hey, hey, Glee. Glee. What? Thongs. Thongs. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we all have a golden gay time? <laughs> yes. I've actually eaten one of those. I'm I need so to. confused. Anyway, uh, um, one thing I... Golden Gay actually... Time is an Australian, like, um, ice, it's ice that, cream's on top two, two and six. Exactly. That's my exact issue. Um, <laughs> no ginger nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, by the way, I should probably get this out there. Uh, for those who are watching um, and, like, are interested in what counts as a hate incident... Uh, Verbal and physical abuse, uh, physical violence, teasing, bullying, threatening behavior, online abuse, and damage to property uh, all constitute as a hate incident, in, hate incident um, which of course, when done with harassment, which is a criminal offense, uh, makes it a hate crime. Um, so yes, this person is guilty of a hate crime, and they've just been acquitted of everything. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sasha just said poorly shaped gingerbread people. <laughs> Ginger fetuses. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, different recipe, Sash. But yeah. They're very different. Ginger nuts are way more crunchy. They're not bread. They're they're like actual. I'm sorry, I've derailed your stream. It's with my, fine. Uh, my biscuits. There's a lot of heavy <laughs> stuff to get through. Um, they are cookies. But we go to the <laughs> final topic. Uh, if anyone has any questions you'd like to ask either host or our guest, feel free to write them out. I'm sure Levi will keep an eye out for them. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll also keep an eye out for them. Uh, we'll come back to them at the end. We'd have one more story, which is thankfully a lot more positive than the rest of the shit we've been dealing with uh, today. Uh, and that's the fact that San Francisco officials are seeking proposals for 1.6 million US dollars to be awarded over the next two years, um, aimed at boosting the lives of black transgender residents and other LGBT plus people of color in the area. Um, now this actually comes from two different funds. Uh, there's 1,375,000 US dollars, which is to be divided among three different organizations over the next two years, um, specifically for their programs aimed at black trans individuals, uh, especially black trans women, which anyone who watched my recent Blair White video will know is the demographic with the highest uh, rate of uh, murder. Um, I believe it's between two and like 77 times higher than the average population, if I remember correctly, uh, via estimates. Um, so to see actual funding go specifically to help them, that's just lovely to see. Um, the Human Rights Commission uh, is also accepting proposals for a quarter of a million in funding over the next two years. And this funding will be divided between two organizations uh, which are being, like, which are designed to help queer people of color, particularly black trans and non-binary entrepreneurs, uh, who want to open their own business in San Francisco. Um, because of course, being, uh, you know, the intersection of being a black trans person uh, it's hard enough in America as a black person. Uh, that's come to the forefront more than ever recently. Um, it's always been hard and it's largely been ignored. The wounds uh, entrenched by racism and slavery and everything are still prevalent. But on top of that, you also have the intersection of being trans and not necessarily being accepted by family as with all uh, demographics, but those things can then double up. Um, and it puts an already at-risk demographic at extreme risk. So it, it's good to see that there are efforts being made consciously to help these demographics. Um, and hopefully this is just the start of uh, things. Um, <clears throat> Uh, special consideration will be given to organizations uh, with experience working with sex workers, uh, formerly incarcerated people, thank you dear, 
uh, marginally housed people and survivors of violence. Um, so th again, they are trying to help the, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, the worst off among society. Um, and the city department, I should say, quote, the city department and the mayor's office will then uh, confer on the final decision and awardees will be notified by January the 22nd. Um, the programs receiving grants should begin uh, February the 1st and run through to January 31st uh, of 2023. Uh, so yes, it's just... <laughs> I keep saying, it's nice. Um, but like, they talk about how the fact that a lot of trans organizations only get 1% of government contracts, um, you know, uh, and large foundation-based contracts, so they're, they're being starved financially. Um, I, I can speak about INJU a little bit, um, but I, I, I don't know how things are with the ongoing pandemic in the US and charity organizations. I imagine they are probably suffering, as most are. Um, so again, to see this money being put aside, uh, and from what I've read in the, um, the Bay Area Reporter, um, it seems that it is being a black-led effort. Um, so it's taking in like their considerations, because there's always the fears of, you know, oh, this money is going to be pledged, given, and it's just going to disappear. It's going to be siphoned off uh, somewhere. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know if either of you have anything you really want to say on that. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry. being very useful today. I do apologize. Uh, our stories may not have quite so many points uh, today. Um, I also did not get a chance to do notes. I, okay. This is why I do notes, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, they are... Here's, here's the plot I was trying to find. Uh, since August, the City Department has held more than 60 meetings with various black community and other diverse stakeholders about how to best invest the funding. So again, it has been community-led. Um, this is not just uh, a bunch of white people sitting around uh, screwing things up, hopefully, um, <laughs> if the article's accurate. So, uh, yeah. Um... <sighs> I think that is really it. It's 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 nice to have a nice-ish story to end on, mm -hmm. really. Uh, I don't know if there have been any questions. We do have a guest here, which you, you can ask questions of them if you want. They are here. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you were afraid you'd have to explain Jewish things to all the Goyim. I, hmm? well, I was just told I'm being brought on to talk about Jewish stuff. And I know that Jewish people aren't exactly Ethel's target demographic, so I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to explain everything, aren't I? <laughs> I don't really have a target demographic. Happens. I have more of a demographic yes, I hate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just bigots in general. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, it's, yeah. Quite a people. I don't do. have a tar target demographic, they say, on a stream called the, the trans transgender. Agenda. That's <laughs> new. We've only been at this uh, three, months. three months. Um, <laughs> the three months. Only three months. Yeah. Only. In 2020 time, that's like 20 years. Uh, but yeah. Um, I mean, there's always a concern that, like, I don't have, I have a bit of experience with Judaism, but I don't have much. Um, most of what I know is uh, studying uh, Judaism so I can get a better understanding of the evolution of early Christendom, um, and also uh, studying blood libel uh, when responding oh to- Oh God, blood libel. Mm, yeah. Um, if, if bigots do exist, smallets do too. <laughs> I love you chat, never change. But like, like looking into uh, that because there's the whole um, Christians like come at uh, secular say, oh, you know, the Holocaust was secular atrocity. It's like, okay, well, let's say that's true for a second. Uh, where did like the basis for everything that happened in the Holocaust come from? Because it wasn't a case of, I know a lot of people have this uh, 
misunderstanding that anti-Semitism was created and ended with the Nazis. And it's like, no, oh, that, that's, God, that's no. not European history. Um, like there's a church. In Judaism, in Judaism, we literally have it in our holy book, uh, the Torah, that every generation of Jew is going to be persecuted in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. Um, like, there is a church in England which depicts uh, Jewish people blood-sacrificing Christian children. Like, mm. you know, and this, this is a stained glass window. These are expensive things. Um, yeah, with the blood libel thing, I've been told uh, to my face that I'm going to steal their children and bake it into... Uh, a whole list of things, but the mm -hmm. most ridiculous one is my matzah, which is a cracker. So why the hell would I put blood in it? Right, I guess they're probably linking it up to because another blood libel, like blood libel, the name comes from like the main one, which is the sacrifice aspect. Um, but uh, it covered a lot, and one of them was the uh, the sacrilege of the I've forgotten what it's called. Uh, the specific term for it in Catholicism, but the body, uh, so the body of Christ. Uh, and there are like really old paintings of um, supposed to be Jewish people stabbing bread uh, because this is the bread that is the body of Christ. Um, and it's, it's quite surreal. Um, that was one of the things that was uh, covered under blood libel. Another one, a very common one, which has persisted in popular culture is the poisoning of wells. Um, whenever a water source became tainted uh, and like people started becoming sick or dying, uh, the Jews were the ones who got the blame. Um, so, you know, uh, it, there was a lot of different things that were covered under it. Basically, when it comes to, to Nazis, uh, never assume that they are the origin of their bigotry. Mm. Nazis are not creative. They no, got it they, from they somewhere. They rose out of somewhere. Not just, like, there was the historical context of, like, the blood libel and everything like that. And there was also the current political context of, like, the depression and everything. Like, they rose to power really effectively. Um, which is why, like, these discussions about if you could kill baby Hitler, would you? Uh, are kind of redundant because even if Hitler hadn't done it, the chances are someone an, else would have. Another anti Semite would have come to power, and the Jews were the obvious people to blame for, um, you know, the problems that Nazi Germany was fallen upon, hard times, etc., because they had always been the scapegoats. Um, Actually, it's interesting, right? So I've been getting into a lot of discussions lately about mm -hmm. ableism, and I've been trying to find a resource about the connection between. Uh, ableism, intelligence, etc., and eugenics. And I mm -hmm. found this really interesting one where it's like an interactive uh, thing of all these these bubbles that are connected together and you can click on them and it opens up a whole bunch of other things. I've been reading through it. I have come across Hitler zero times so far. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not just him. Uh, He's not a creative man. <laughs> Goza is One cool. of the things Hitler took upon from is this project that happened in America where a guy mm. liked to measure skulls and like Phenology. That garbage. Phenology. Um, and also another yeah. place they got a lot of their ideas from was Martin Luther, the, uh, as Goza mentions, the uh, German reformer of the church. Um, Kristallnacht was very clearly based on the writings uh, of Martin Luther. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I, I, I... Let's do a positive thing. One thing I am pleasantly surprised, and I need to get around to visiting, there is a Jewish community here in India, quite a very old Jewish community as well, not like post-World War II, Ooh. you know, they moved around. I need to go to them because they are well-known as uh, world-class bakers here. Uh, and I need to go try. Um, there, there's like, uh, there I are don't know if this is, I don't know my own religion or but, like, I don't know India, but I've never ancient, heard of them. These, 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 these they, like, they, people who came here like, all, like ancient times. Um, like, they, they, like the Parsi, they've been rather insular. If you don't know who the Parsi are, the Parsi are the Iranians who fled Iran when the um, Islamification occurred. 
Uh, they are the fire worshippers. Uh, they have a settlement here as well. Um, interesting thing about them is they engage in sky burials, uh, which normally only uh, like the hill like the hill tribes here really engage in. Uh, a sky burial is where you present the dead body to the sky. So scavenging birds can clean off the bones, and then you gather the bones and put them somewhere. Uh, but because they were in Delhi, they used to build these spinnerets, these tall towers, uh, which they'd place the bones at the top of, the, the bodies at the top of, and they'd be cleaned off that way. Uh, that's why Delhi used, Delhi used to have such a large vulture population. Uh, sadly, they've been decimated uh, because of oh. poisons and everything uh, in yeah. Delhi. Um, but anyway, yes, there is a actual a Jewish community here in India. There's one street I've seen someone do like a tour of that I really want to. Um, because like you go out, you see the um, the Hindu, the Sikh, the Islamic designs like masoned into the stonework everywhere. Uh, and there's one street in particular where it just switches from those symbols to Judaic symbols. And it's still got an Indian sort of like design to it. Um, but you know, you still got like the stars and everything. It's really interesting. I do need to go there. Um, can I, <laughs> Ethel, can I also try the Jewish baking? Because Wade has been telling me I need to try bagels. I, I guess I really need to go there. You really do need to try bagels. They're good. Not you committed <laughs> sin by doing lox and <laughs> cream cheese on bread. Yeah. I had, I had cream cheese and smoked salmon in a sandwich because we don't have bagels here we just have sandwich and Glade is very offended by this <laughs> but um like, i need to go there because one thing about indian cakes is um apart from a few select bakers they all use the exact same uh base mix um it's eggless uh and they don't like the eggless <laughs> like the way they compensate for the eggless they don't like increase other flavorings what they do is they reduce the overall amount of cake and they fill the entire thing with just like whipped cream um which they don't use like fresh cream either they use very synthetic squirty cream which is fine on like hot chocolate and everything but you end up taking a bite of cake and you just get a little bit of sponge a mouthful of like bland cream and that's it <laughs> um so yeah. that's one of the reasons we do need to try um yeah. And now everyone's just talking about Jewish baked goods in the chat. Um, have you not? I, I'm not sure if they're making assumptions or not. Have you had bagels, Apple? I have had bagels. Yeah, I've had bagels. Yeah, it's just me because uh, there aren't bagels in Australia. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you're just anti Semitic, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I am famous. <laughs> famously anti Semitic. That's why I keep learning about Jewish things. That's why you call me a weird Jew. You call yourself a weird Jew. Don't bra drag me into it. You were the one who called me a weird Jew for Jewish people. I just did the obvious contraction of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I have not tried a cream cheese bagel. I've heard about them, um, but I have not tried that. Okay, so if you're going to do that, you have to put what is known as lox on it, which is basically a, a form of salmon. It's spelled oh, I... L-O-X. You need to try it. Lox. Costco in Australia. Okay, you have to understand, Julba, that I live in Perth. There's nothing here. I did. They did have big quote unquote bagels for sale at the the aquarium, but they were fake bagels. So, what was? How was, did you spell the salmon thing? Lox. Oh, L O X. L -O -X. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. I just lost you that. I'm just. I'm just going to Google Costco Australia because I didn't think that was the thing. <laughs> I'm just opening up both of your worlds. It's great. <laughs> Actually, I should Google Costco Perth. But yeah, so uh, some people asked if you've had, uh, if they've made rugelach. I, Ethel, do they? Have you ever heard of rugelach before? Uh, I possibly, uh, but... Costco it's a wholesale... Flaky, oh, hang it's on, a sorry. flaky, like, twist pastry. Costco Wholesale Perth Airport. I'm not going not. to Perth Airport to have bakes. Um. <laughs> Like not what I can think of. Um, I'm going to Perth Airport Adventure. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've not been to this place, and I hope I am remembering it is in Delhi and not Mumbai, because um, <laughs> that would kill me if it was in Mumbai instead. Uh, but like, yeah. Um, but I just know I know about them. I've, it's one of the things we mean to go to. Um, but like, 
shortly after arriving, I kind of became a shut-in um, for a long time. And then the pandemic happened. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs> so that's interesting. Uh, but yes, I think this has kind of come to a natural end. Everyone is thinking about baked goods now, which is a nice way to end. I'm thinking the show. about. I'm not thinking about baked goods. I'm thinking about coming over and making you not a shut in anymore. Well, I'm no longer. I'm not a shut in anymore. Like before the the quarantine happened, I was starting to get out again a lot more. Um, then the quarantine. Yeah, happened. Ethel's not a shut in. They're being a responsible member of society. It's, it's if people remember mm. 2018, I had I got a lot of dysphoria, and that started in 2017. Uh, and for the entire year, you know. There were times where I went for like two weeks and I never came down from the fourth floor that we lived on. Um, uh, you know, we, we lived in a rough area and everything like that. Excuse me, very gassy. I do apologize. Uh, it was a very rough area and everything. I didn't get out and now I'm hiccuping. Great. Um, very rough area, didn't do very much. Um, then we moved to here uh, things were a bit rough, of course, when we first moved over here, because that was the time I got Darvoed. Um, but then, like, after that, we just started getting out. We started going to the Tibetan colony more, because we love the Tibetan colony, uh, mainly for the Korean food. Um, follow that logic. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so we loved going to the Tibetan colony, um, and we loved uh, also then the Parsi place. We go to the Parsi place quite often. Uh, Parsi, the Parsi place is where we had our wedding reception. Um, we love it that much. Uh, we have a good relationship with the, um, not the owner. Uh, we have met her. She's a lovely woman. Um, but we have a good relation with the other members of staff in the restaurant. They've actually just opened a place near us. They were supposed to open a place near the start of the quarantine, sadly that ran through when the quarantine started. Um, they couldn't get it built and everything. Uh, but they now have opened a place, get this, in the same area we used to live. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, oh great, our favorite restaurant opened up a place in the area we used to live. Um, but yeah, so uh, I am getting out more. We have gone out more. Um, for Adita's birthday, because it was out in the open, it was in the open air, and we could keep our distance from everyone, we went to the Red Fort uh, for the first time, and holy shit, that place is big. Um, you think about the Red Fort, you think it's going to be like a castle, like in the UK, it's going to have like a little ground on the inside, and you have some towers, and the actual fort building. No, it is big. Um, like, it's got four separate museums. Uh, no five, if you include the archaeological museum as well. Uh, the four museums I was thinking of are like the modern day, um, train says hi, the modern day museum from uh, the first uh, Revolutionary War, which sadly failed, um, and then it also includes the later Revolutionary War and the revolutionaries behind it. Uh, then there's the archaeological museum, there's also a new museum they're building, um, <laughs> and like, and like, this is just on empty land. There's also the like, the old uh, temple, the place where the um, the king used to see people and take like their pledges, etc. And then you've got like the private um, the private palace area, uh, and then you've got like a swimming area. Um, it's just so lovely, it's so big. And again, it was open and it was practically deserted, um, which is also great. Uh, so yeah. Um, um, of course, uh, yesterday I was talking about how I'm probably going to have a stroke when I see the Red Fort. Uh, <laughs> tell them tell them about how you reacted the first time you saw Perth on Google Maps when we first started talking about leaving the city. Do you remember that? I can't, I'm sorry, my mind is oh, okay. everything. No, it's okay. Um, so we initially decided we were, that I was going to visit them in, this was back in May, mm -hmm. so it's fair enough to, to forget. Uh, and like we looked up, I looked up Delhi on Google Maps. They looked up Perth, and they're just like, "Oh, it's so tiny! <laughs> it's yeah, so it's cute! So you tiny. call it a city? You call it a city? <laughs> oh yeah, that was, yeah. I was. I remember that now. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're like, um, we're talking about potential problems I might have with like the noise and the crowd and, and stuff, mm -hmm. and not knowing how airplane airplanes work because I've only been on one, and." He said, 
oh, there's, there's one thing I'm a bit worried about you might not be able to deal with here because uh, I'm not sure if the Australians have heard of it. It's called a city. <laughs> it's a mega city, though, specifically. Delhi is a mega city. Um, I know. And, and Perth is like not <laughs> even a real... It's technically a city by population. But that's about like, it. <laughs> I've got a... Friend. It's more accurately a suburb. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a friend who lives in a different city to Delhi. Uh, they drive in to work. Um, but when you drive, when we go to that city, to, we used to go there to play D&D before everything. Um, you never notice where the city ends because it's just built back to back the this city and the other cities because it's, it's starting to absorb it as well. Um, yeah. But yeah. So. There's, there's that observatory that used to be on the outskirts of Delhi and it's yeah. now in the center. There is, there's an uh, observatory. I, keep, I, I should look up its name, um, but it's one of the first places. It's the place. It's the first place I went to actually when I landed in Delhi. Um, like we had it, we we stayed in for the night. We ate food at the hotel. We watched Father Ted because this is before yeah. Graham Linehan got involved in everything. <laughs> we watched Father Ted on the TV. No. On our laptop. We had the laptop, of course, in the hotel room. Uh, we still hadn't had a place. We'd like take one day to rest and then we go. Uh, and then we went to this one observatory they have in uh, Delhi, which used to be on the outskirts. It used to be like Christine. You could see all the stars and everything. Um, not anymore. Uh, it is surrounded by the capital buildings, uh, specifically for the different like political parties. Um, it is in the middle of uh, Delhi. It's like a f- ten minute walk away from the new um, economic district. Uh, you know, so it's it's just it's now in the middle of the city. You can't see the stars there at night, <laughs> sadly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but it's still nice. Still good to see. Um, had the weirdest experience there on my first day. Uh, standing there, uh, this is before I realised just how white people are sort of seen in India. Uh, get approached by two people. Um, they're talking to Adita in Hindi. I can't follow the conversation at all. Uh, one of them has a camera. The other one, like, takes my hand forcefully and shakes it as the friend takes a camera. I was like, oh, is this, like, a promotion thing for the, um, for the observatory? No, they were just random people. Um... <laughs> You know, um, White people are a tourist attraction. Yeah, we, we are the portable tourist attraction here. Um, it's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I I'll try and brace myself for that. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, th- this happened. We also got mobbed by the uh, bag people at the airport. And Adita didn't yeah. Yeah, realize what went on quick enough to stop them. Um, but like, we, we're, we're very good at dealing with this now. Um, there was an incident inside the museum at the Red Fort, uh, where uh, I heard one of them say photo, and they were trying to do that discreet thing with their phone, where they look like they're um, trying to look at something, but they actually followed me around with the phone as I was doing all sorts of side steps to avoid... Like, I know exactly what you're doing. Um, uh-huh. And yeah. Anyway, um, yes. Is there anything else you want to say? Uh, we're just currently talking right now, and I, I feel that's valid. Um, <laughs> I, I feel it's nice to talk about things. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's our agenda, so... I just remembered it's, gonna be, it's It's the last show of the year as well. I was just about to say, last show it's of the last year. last show of the year. Um, that's, and that's how it always is at the end, or at least in Australia, at the end of the year, you just kind of keep off and talk about random stuff. That's the law. You have to. Yeah. Um... If anyone's watching this and have any plans on where you'd like the show to go more, um, you can always message us. Uh, Twitter's now open. I don't need to send you the... Um, the uh, like. Normally it used to be, hey, someone would message me, hey, I need you to give me access to your Twitter so I can message you. So I'd have to like, add them, follow them uh, before they could. Uh, that's now gone. So you can always contact us via Twitter, um, Facebook as well, or you can always comment down below. We always love reading your comments. Um, hmm. so yeah. um, I'm six foot one, uh, so yeah, uh, it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be interesting, and it's like, especially we're starting HRT and voice training, and we're doing all this, so I can't get so, at, at the moment. I can pass, um, and like with especially the mask, face mask, I have been passing in certain situations. But the thing is, I know Yay. the moment. Um, the moment someone asks me a question, 
uh, game is over. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, welcome to my life. I get literally like I've been uh, like been called sir, and then I like turn and say yes, and then like oh sorry, ma'am, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> like I was out with um, we were. We went to a park with a couple of friends. Um, they they were they'd been on lockdown. We'd been on lockdown. Uh, this is when things started easing up a little bit. Um, because again, park open area. That's that's yeah. We needed to have some contact. Uh, I am I'm fine staying on my own. Uh, Adita, not so much. Um, <laughs> you know, so she does need to get out. It does need to meet up with people for her mental health and everything. So. Um, so we met up with a couple, um, the one that I've told the story many times of how how I became the guest of honor at their wedding without being told. Um, so, you know, went there, met up with them, um, and the husband knows I'm trans and knows that I'm starting to go through it. The wife does not, and the wife, a little rough. Um, <laughs> like, she's not... She's not from a certain human rights circles in India, because in India you've got like different circles, like generally human rights families sort of like stick together, and then you've got like the fascist families, and you've got the traditional families, and she comes more from traditional families, you know. Her family has been watching over a, um, a college university campus for like generations now. Uh, they literally have housing on the, uh, on the campus because of this. Um, so, you know, Sorry, I hope my cat isn't being too loud. Oh, we can't hear the cat. I can't hear the cat, at least. Um, but so she went to a loo. Uh, I was going to the loo. Uh, and the person at the door, because it very often is a person at the door in India, um, they have, like, the people power, uh, directed me to the women's bathroom. I was very tempted to, like, take it off. Okay, that's just, like, they're not going to have an issue with that. But then I was like, ah, actually, she's in there. She doesn't know yet. Um... But she knows me, so if I go in there, and that could cause an issue. Um, but yeah, so you know, there are times where I get mistaken. Again, when queuing up at the metro, very often they try to put me into the, the female queue, um, even though I stuck to the male queue because legally being recognised as trans in India is a fucking nightmare. I don't know how it would mess up the marriage certificate myself and Adita did. Uh, or got even did we got we did a marriage certificate. Uh, we did a marriage. <laughs> My cat isn't being loud enough. That's true. It's very true. Um, you know, I don't know how that would mess up with everything, and it's just yeah. So it's just going to be interesting to see all that with the height and everything. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I, uh, I guess it's probably time to wrap things up. It's been Is lovely. Having the two of you on here, um, hopefully. Okay, but be honest. What? Be honest about what? I'm I'm making a joke that you're saying that just to spit off you. Okay. That's the joke. Uh, Hanania, I hope it's been okay <laughs> for you being on here. Yeah, I, it's been great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm. I know. I end up talking a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm glad. I was. I was scared. I was gonna mess up in some way. <laughs> Uh, but we just want, we just like, when I first talked to Levi about this project, I was kind of hoping that he might suggest, uh, you know, bringing you on. Uh, if not, I was going to like go for other options, other connections I have. For reference, he, um, first, like he just brought up the topics. He was mm -hmm. like, Hey, do these have anti-Semitics? like sounds to you and I'll and I was like literally in bed when he texted me that I'm, I'm like sorry. oh yeah he told was, me about that like, yeah he told me that you went to bed um yeah I was so I was like oh yeah it sounds kind of like that but I need to go to sleep and then I wake up and then he's like telling me about like oh Elliot, this is gonna be on the show uh, Elliot Page. He, this is gonna be on the show and I'm like oh neat uh if you want I can participate and then he says yeah Ethel really wants you to I was like <laughs> Okay, cool. I had backups just in case, but like, you know, um, even just having someone here who can just step in if we screw up. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, if if I have a reason to, I'll show up, Sash. <laughs> um, you know, uh, at the same time, like, 
I, I wish I had prepared possibly a little bit more like question wise with things. Um, I, I hopefully hopefully you feel your time was well spent. I don't know. I just have this tendency to think I did terrible at everything. Um, you did great. You um, did really good, Ethel. You should. You should. All of you should have uh, seen me after the first show. I was nearly in tears. <laughs> it's like Levi was consoling me. Mm -hmm. I just felt horrible. I felt like no one was ever coming back to the show again. Um, so yeah. Ethel, Ethel, I'm a very honest Stop. person. If you're doing something bad, I will call you out on it. Do Stop. not worry. Stop hurting me. Stop hurting your birds. <laughs> so uh thank you a terrible everyone. owner <laughs> thank you everyone who has turned up um again if you'd like to support our channel super chats are always welcome uh there's also donation links that pop up now and then or if you'd like to support us via patreon patreon also always helps you know you'll get your name read out at the end of streams and also at the end of videos uh you also get shown at the end of videos as well. Um, so, you know, it's it's really a big help. It keeps us going. Um, <laughs> the one thing I'm just thinking about like, is the fact that I just bought medical insurance. Um, <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> I've gone an entire year without medical insurance. That's not a good thing. Um, no. That no, sounds like not. my that sounds like my fear. I plan on moving out soon and yeah. it's the US, so my yeah. I will not be on my parents' health insurance anymore and I'm on a bunch of meds, so yay. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's like it's it's been so weird for me as a bit. Um like each year mm -hmm. I I I do the travel insurance because that covered everything. Uh it's when it was in September September last year, a lot of income disappeared. Um and like just after that, it took us so long to get everything back on track, pay off debts. Uh, and then after Aww. that, there was just like, I had a family member who died and they just took me out mentally. And yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Should we start uh, a Discord? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to like quarter you into, I was, I was going to say like, should we talk should. about that in the housekeeping? But I didn't want to, I wanted to maybe like give you time to think about it if you wanted. Sorry, I no, uh, it's okay. Okay. So. Jamie, Jamie mentioned to me, oh, you know, at Essence of Thought, you don't really have much of a community because you don't have a Discord. And I thought, we can't do a Discord because that's going to be way too much work. But then I happened to mention it yesterday. And from what you said, I thought it sounded more like we just haven't done one because you're not familiar with Discord, mm -hmm. not because of the work involved. And now I know that we could. I actually really like the idea of setting up a Discord. I'm all the time. I actually had someone ask me on my channel if I had a Discord. <laughs> I'm 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 so tempted. It's been hard not to look up how to start a server now. Okay, so that seems to be. I like... can help you if you want, Levi. I've made like three. <laughs> okay, um, it'll also add. Do you want me to? Do you want me to to do to to run the server since I actually know how to use Discord? Uh, yeah, I will do that for you. I'm quite willing to help out. Um, <laughs> of course I'll help out. But like, yeah, we can we can get that set up <laughs> if people want that. That's a more direct link as well. You can all talk about the show and everything. Um, I was just going to say to uh, Sasha, actually, I'm so sorry, you you need a better year. Uh, if starting a Discord will help with that, I will do that for you. Yeah, I think a lot of us need a better year. Um, mm -hmm. Especially yeah. those, the trans people who are also in the SECA community in the 2019 need a better year. Um, mm. Because 2019 and 2020 have both been really shit years. Uh, I, honestly, I, I had to look back on some of your videos, I think, to check a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some beers around the controversy and I was thinking oh my god remember when being a trans person was easy yeah remember <laughs> that was that was such a blissful time yeah when it was just individual figures <laughs> mm -hmm. but yes anyway we will look into a discord then that seems to be enough people going for that um but yes it's been a trying year uh we've also achieved uh, a lot of things um, again Levi joining the team becoming friends everything like that um, <clears throat> that's been a <sighs> see if it had just been you following me on Twitter that would have been one thing but I swear every month you did something impossible like that it is it, it has been a time it's just been too much I'm sorry <laughs> I'm happy but it's been too I'm much. sorry um, but yeah 
Do not be sorry. I'm sorry. I, I completely <laughs> forget the facts that Graham Linehan was this beginning of this year. Like the role oh, to save. I God, completely forget that that is the beginning of this year. I actually, mm. I was doing some cleaning. And uh, where is it? Where is it? I, uh, I came across some rough sketches, dust everywhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, from the actual original stream. Um, and it's just like, that was this year? My God. That was um, a time for me. I, okay. So for Roll to Save, we had a group chat on Twitter so that we could coordinate the members of the team. Because of time zones, I was asleep when that was made. So I just woke up and found <laughs> myself in this group chat. Up until then, it just been Ethel and I like talking on the... We, we did have the thing with Piggy and Contra and that. So we had kind of been working together, but nothing on that level. Mm. It was a shock and a half for me. I'm like, wait, you want me to be involved in this thing? I was the youngest member of that team, I think, by at least four, by four years. If anyone remembers March, that whole like the role to save and the interviews. Oh yeah, the interviews. I was one of those interviews. I was one of I was the, yeah, you, the were. Last you were the one, was you were the one after the me. Jeez. Oh god, it's thirty just... hours. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it was a time. And then, of course, you, poor thing, you had to run the entire thing. I this wish I could year has more. been 10. This year's just been 10 years, honestly. It's just, yeah. Oh, but hopefully the new year will, you know, the year where we can start pushing things back. Um, yeah. You know. It can't get worse. Knock on wood. <laughs> I was just like, oh, it reminds me of a joke someone sent me. Um... Apparently, I, I don't know if any of you here are Firefly fans. Disney no, Plus too is young for that. actually considering is actually working on uh, re doing a revival, a reboot, um, and it's like someone sent me a link to that. I was like, "Do not send me this. We have been through this enough, enough times of oh, so it said that so and so is starting to bring back Firefly. We've been through this, uh, so yeah." <laughs> Um, Levi, how dare you challenge the universe to be worse to trans people? I didn't. I knocked on wood. So, um, My desk is proper wood, by the way. It's not like laminate or something. <laughs> I knocked on actual wood, therefore nothing bad can happen. That's how it works. By the way, how does everyone think about the setup? Because literally, I just... I designed the setup in like a week. Um, <laughs> like, for the role to save. Uh, and I haven't changed it. Um... So I'm not sure if the, the visuals look good. Excuse me. I've been liking the visuals every time I watch the backlog of the stream because I'm never actually up this late. Yeah. And also Shabbat. Mm -hmm. it's, it's technically not late. It's technically 8 a.m., but I haven't been asleep yet. But um, I, I'm trying to keep it very simple as well for the layout. There's literally just the... The, the chat box, the camera, and then there's like three links on the side. I'll have to add Discord, I guess, to that later. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I see a lot of other people have like bells and whistles on everything. It's like, do I really want that? Or is it just gonna become a mess? Uh, <coughs> it's just, yeah. If you do bells and whistles though, I'll get distracted. Oh God, really? <laughs> get you a little budgie mirror. <laughs> Yes, get me a little mirror with a little bell. Levi is a budgie, because budgies are loud as hell. I'm a cockatiel, thank you very much. I thought yeah. I, I thought you knew I was bird racist already. I, <laughs> and it surprises me every time. Okay, then. Well, uh, if you have any like advice on the show, I, 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 I keep saying we're going to leave. Um, but I do yeah, think it's... Yeah, and then you never do. I don't want to turn the show off. Um, You're our friends. We love you. I'm just like I'm being surprised at how like constant the turnout's been. It's always been around seventy to sixty people, um, or sixty to seventy, I should say. Uh, and even like now, people have left because we stopped talking about the topics. I've said goodbye several times. Some people have just <laughs> left, um, only to realize Let's it's be... like a half hour extra on the show. Let's um, be honest. Let's be honest. This is mostly my. Fault. <laughs> okay. Am I wrong? 
how? I, I like how? How is it? What's your fault? Uh, the fact that we're still doing the show. <laughs> not really. It's not your fault. Um, we all keep talking. Yeah. So. Anyway. I, uh, I guess, but like, I'm the reason you have a co-host, and I'm the reason you have a guest. So it's my fault. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, there will be a video coming out hopefully by the end of the year. It might be after the year, uh, going over everything like channel-wise and the struggles, the achievements, and the hopes for next year. Um, currently working on that, so hopefully that'll be up. Uh, but yes, yeah, so thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for listening to us just mess around and not actually do anything constructive. You should hang up first. Uh, Glaze, is there anything you want to say on the way out? <laughs> uh, no, just bye, guys. Thanks for having me. If you want me again, I can show up. I just... I, I need scheduling. Really have... It's just... you Scheduling will be weird since it... I, stream starts at 6 a.m. for me, and it's I'm usually sorry. on ship. It's not even that. That's not a problem. It's the fact that it's on Shabbat, yeah. which is, uh, I, I am Orthodox. I cannot be on computer mm -hmm. during that time. So, yeah, that's understandable, and that's why we moved today. If, if anyone's wondering why we moved today, it's because in order to have. Um, it seems like a dick move to have a, a show about anti-Semitism on a day Jewish that people can't Jewish people watch can't live. Participate yeah, I talked to Levi about that. I'm like, <laughs> literally everyone in the world, it's going to be Shabbat for them. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Um, and like, normally the, the time thing is literally just, I run D&D &D on Friday. I play D&D &D on Sunday. <laughs> um, so Saturday is usually the one day that I have. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, good Yule and a happy new year to everybody, I guess. Uh, Bye everyone, I'll see you next year. Leave the chat running for a while, the video running for a while, so you can all say your goodbyes in the chat. Okay, Bye.